And the prophet said, when God loves the people, he afflicts them. And the one who is content receives his contentment. And the one who is angry receives his anger. Your duty, O believer, is to know and believe that God the exalted is the one who causes guidance and misguidance, misery and happiness, and nearness and remoteness. He gives them withholds, abases and exalts, and causes harm and benefit. Having known and believed in this, your duty is never to object, whether outwardly or inwardly, to any of his acts, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To object means to say, why was that? What for? Why was it not, not like this or that? What did so-and-so do to deserve this? So the imam is giving us an insight into how a person gets to one of the highest stations, one of the highest spiritual stations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we look at um, the people that were closest to Allah after the prophets, because the prophets are on a different, different level. Like that's a, that's a station that no one can get to by, by any amount of effort. It's a gift from Allah and Allah chooses who He wants to be prophets. And even amongst the prophets, some are higher than others. And we know the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, He's the elect, He's the top, He's the Imam, he's, he's the number one of all the prophets. He's the ultimate Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in both senses and meaning of the word. So... When we look at the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside of the prophets, who are they? <laughs> the Sahaba, right? The companions of the Prophet. They're the best. Doesn't matter. No one can beat no one, no one can be Abu Bakr. Allah Mardanu. It's impossible. No matter what you do, you can't be Abu Bakr Allah Mardanu said that. Why? Because the Prophet said it. He said, if, if the, he said if the Iman of Abu Bakr was in one pan of a scale and the Iman of the rest of the whole Ummah was in the other pan of the scale, that the, that the Iman of Abu Bakr would be weightier in the scale than everyone else's. What about Sayyidina Umar? He's the Sahib, right? It doesn't work. You can't beat it. And then, So they're the best of the best. They're the best of the best. It doesn't mean that we can't reach those high levels because in another hadith, the Prophet says there will come a people who says, I can't wait to greet my beloved. And they, the companions, they say, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your beloved? He says, No, you are my companions. They said, Who's your beloved? They, he said, There are people who will come after, you, after me and they will never have seen me nor will they have heard of me. But they will give all their wealth just to see me in a dream. And he said, they, and he said They're worth 50. They said, Oh, Rasulullah, 50 of us or 50... 50 of them or 50 of us, he said 50 of you. So we can be 50 of each of the Sahaba in that sense. But the best of all people after the Anbiya are the Sahaba. Right? It's an important thing to know if we didn't know before. And when we say Abu Bakr, Allah, what do we say after that? He gave the answer away, so it's pretty easy. Right? May Allah be pleased with him. Because that's the highest of stations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Jannah. And then he says, What adwain Allahi? Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he talks about Jannah and what's in Jannah and everything else. And he says, What is more greater than that? What's better than Jannah? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is pleased with us, He's happy with us. And who did it, and two people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent salams to, you know, one was Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the other one was Sayyidina Khadija. The, the salams meaning that I'm pleased with you. And then are you pleased with your Lord was the, was the question Allah SWT asked them as well. So that's why Imam al-Haddad in this book has left the Rida to the end. Because without love, according to his, the friendly scholars say whatever they say, but Imam al-Haddad is saying, when a person is in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they're ready to accept the decree of Allah. And that's what Rida is about. Yeah? That's what contentment, is, as it's called here, is about. Tadalu. No, that's all the Sahaba. All the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, waradu'an, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ رَبَّ So the, the, the state of, of rida, one can achieve it. It's not, 
Just because they're the best of people doesn't mean we can't get to that stage. We can. Allah SWT says it in the Quran. Allah is pleased with them. Radiallahu anhum. They're pleased with Allah. Allah SWT says that is also those for their, that is also available for those who are conscious of their Lord. Those who have comprehension of their Lord, they can also reach that status. They can also. There's plenty of chairs around if you need more chairs. Yeah. Are you sure? I don't want you to be uncomfortable and can't concentrate. All right. So it's the highest of the stations because if, if the love isn't there, how are we going to accept? And then what do the Arabs say? Darb al-Habib zay akl al-Zabib or mutl al-Zabib. You know, they say that the Arabs have to say Habib because it rhymes with Zabib is sultanas, which is sweet. And the Arabs, of course, that was the dates and sultanas because they're dried and it's hot climate. That's what they used to eat. So they say even, even being hit by one's beloved, the one that person loves, is like it's sweet. It's nice. Not, not that we're advocating domestic or family violence. We're just saying that that's, that's the state of the one who's in love. That's the state of, of one who's in love. There was a back in the day, this guy's named Jamal Aisha, the guy, and he used to love this lady. It's a true story, by the way. Right? He used to love this lady, but, and she always had, because she knew that, you know, being the case of some women, when she knew that he was in love with her, she took advantage of it. So, oh, I want this and I want that and I want this. And he's the guy's poor. So what was he doing? He was stealing. He was stealing whatever she wanted and stealing things and selling it to get what, what, um, what, what she wanted for her. So Because he's in love with her. He wants, what he, he wants to please her. He wants to please her and he wants her to be pleased with him. And so what happened was he got caught stealing one day. And back in the village, you know, what's not like today, if someone got caught stealing, there'd be a big commotion. People would come out and then people would throw rocks at the person and they'd, throw, they'd beat him and they'd throw their shoes at him and, or her as the case might be. And then one of the awliya, one of the salihin, saw him copying a beating. And then he said to him, what, what is it that makes your, you know, the, what is, it, is, is there anything that makes the beating that you cop easier to handle? And he said, yes. That when, I, when the one who I cop the beating for is looking at me and seeing me cop the beating, then I don't even feel the beating. Because there's pleasure, right? There's pleasure in it. There's contentment. So don't go around beating your husbands. That's not what I'm saying. Or vice versa. It's the, it's the hal, it's the state, it's the condition of the believer that irrespective of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to that person, and we'll give the definition. So the definition is, the removal of apprehension of an unpleasant or undes an undesirable result from one's heart. Right? So, what about tawakkul? We did tawakkul. I don't know, no, I'm going to ask you because no one's going to remember, are you? Is anyone going to remember what tawakkul is? Yes, no. Tell us. No? no. Right, okay, that's, the, that's what's in the Webster's Dictionary. But tell me what it is from what Imam Haddad told us. Right. Do you have an right. So leaving all our affairs into the control of Allah. Tafweed is also is what it's called. Saying that Allah controls our affairs and we're happy with it. So what's the difference between contentment and tawakkul then? Reliance on Allah. What's the difference between contentment and reliance? Being content with what you do. Right? That's basically the difference. So let's, I'll give the example. A person is hungry, they want to eat, they're poor, they can't afford They say, Ya Allah, send me food. Right? So tawakkul, that's the tawakkul. Ya Allah, send me food. Ya Allah, send me food. The food comes, it's, I don't know, whatever, spaghetti. Okay? I don't like spaghetti. That's the rida aspect of it. So tawakkul is knowing that Allah is the sustainer. And He's the one who's going to grant the... the the thing that I, I need to sustain me. Rida comes from us, the contentment. Spaghetti, oof, beautiful. Isn't it from my Allah? Isn't, don't I have reliance on Allah? Don't I love Allah? Then I'm happy with that because Allah sent it for me. I'm pleased and content with it. So a person can have tawakkul without having rida. Ya Allah, send me food. Ya Allah, send me food. The food comes, spaghetti, uh, don't really like it. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah? Or Ya Allah, give me a car. You're looking for a Jaguar get a Corolla, not happy. So it really goes back to the state of the individual. And the, the shahid, the, the evidence of that is the Prophet, uh, the Prophet of Allah said, 
He said, he said, ذَاقَ تَعْمَ الْإِيمَانِ The person, مَنْ رَضِيَ بِاللَّهِ رَبًّا وَالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيَّ وَرَسُولًا The person who, the person who is content with Allah as their Lord and Islam as their deen and Muhammad is their prophet, they will taste the sweetness of faith. Right? So that's the difference between the two. Rida is the emotional aspect that is tied to us as human beings and tied to our contentment upon the decree of Allah. Can there be Rida without Tawakul? Yes, there can be. So in, in the state of Rida, a person is put, like, in terms of uh, the, the two sim- similar things, there's another one called Adam al Adam Mubalat. So they're the similar things where a person says they don't care. So that's, that's close to where that is. So a person, whatever happens, whatever situation, it's how, how often you heard it from your kids or your nephews or your nieces or your young people. Some of you may have said it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So I don't care is a state of acceptance, although it's not a, it's not a real state of acceptance. It's a fake state for a limited time to allow the person to deal with the circumstances they're in. So it can come on. That's kind of what it's like. It's not really rida, and nor is it truly tawakkul, but it's it's a shubha. It's like a, um, it's a it's a pseudo pseudo sort of um, pseudo sort of tawakkul. But re- in reality, in reality, rida is the fruit of tawakkul. When a person has contentment on Allah subhanahu wa taala, when a person relies on Allah subhanahu wa taala, the fruit of that is that that they're pleased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa taala decrees for them. No. No. Are there baby steps in getting rid of, for example? Same sort of thing. So the question is, are there baby steps in getting rid of? How, how does a person get into the... And we'll talk a little bit further about it, but basically what it is, it's the same thing. That when something... When the light goes red and you want it to be green, right? So it's about the state we're in, the emotional state we're in, when a lot decrees whatever it is to be, to be. Let's give a better example, rain. Oh, I've got a plan on tomorrow, picnic and friends and whatever, then it's raining or windy. Am I upset? Am I kicking stones? Am I crying? And my, my Facebook is also, I don't know if they have sad faces, whatever, sad faces on my status, whatever it is. Or is it that I say, Alhamdulillah, that's the Qadr of Allah, and I'm pleased with it. With it. And, and we'll talk a little bit further about the ins and outs of it, but we're talking about the essence of it. So it's that apprehension. Ya Allah, I want to get married. Okay? I want to get married, but... I'm stressing about it. Oh, is he going to be tall? Is he going to be blonde? Is he going to have blue eyes? Is he going to have a six pack? Is he going to have pecs? These days he's got to have shaved eyebrows and I don't know, I understand that. But whatever. Is the eyebrows going to be one mono brow or is he going to have two separate brows? I don't get it. Uh, it's weird enough when sisters do it, let alone when brothers are doing it. No, I mean men, I mean brothers are doing it. It's pretty weird sort of stuff and haram, so I don't know where they get it from. But So the apprehension... <coughs> It's the apprehension, right? Am I going to get my way? Right? Because I'm asking for saying halal. So I'm tawak- I've got tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes, is it my, according to my own desires? Is it, co- is it according to my own fancies? Is it according to my, what makes, what makes what's pleasurable for me? And that's the, that's the element of ridha. That's why the Sahaba will call that radiallahu ta'ala anhum waradu'an because they went past that stage. They went past all the stages really. When they were in, in Mecca, um, in Arafah, in the month of Dhul Hijjah, on the, 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 which day are they in Arafah? Ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, they were with the Prophet of Allah alayhi sallatu wasalam. And he said to the Sahaba, Oh Sahaba, where are you? He said, Allah and his Prophet Allah Rasuluhu A'lam. Allah and His Prophet know more than where we are. They know where they are. They're in Mecca. Oh, Sahaba, Ma'ashar al Sahaba, which month is it? Allah and His Prophet know better. They know it's Dil Hijjah. What day of the month is it? Right? Everyone knows. Where, Arafah is, where are you? Where, plains of Arafah. They said, 
What, what day is it? The ninth, they didn't respond. Because they were content. They were content with whatever the Prophet of Allah said. And this is the thing for us. When we hear that, we're like, oh, it's like blind, it's like blind faith. That's what, that's, what we, that's what goes into our hearts when we hear anything about the Prophet of Allah. How dumb were they? I'm smarter than that. You know, oh, I wouldn't do that. I'll think for myself. Yeah, but they had 20, 20 odd years, 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, however long, seeing the Prophet of Allah, being around the Prophet of Allah, seeing how he worked, how he said, what he did, his actions. They trusted him. They trusted him. We can't even trust ourselves. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and give us the wood, give us strength. We can't even trust ourselves. Can't, we can't. When we want to do a contract, where everything's got a cooling off period. Even the phone contract's got like seven days. Because you might change your mind. And then when you go to the shops these days, it says no refunds for change of mind. Because they're sick of people coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. Change. Why? What's the, what's the, the, the issue when it comes to that. So the rida, the contentment on whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees doesn't, doesn't need a change of mind. It doesn't mean we don't shop and pay the, you know, make sure things are of good quality and whatever else it is. But the issue is that when, especially the things that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're content with those. We're happy with those. And we say, this is the best thing for me. Why? Because we know who Allah is. Yeah, we know Allah doesn't want to destroy us. And so going back to the Prophet of Allah sallam, they were pleased, they, they didn't, whatever he said, because he's never going to tell them Ali Sallam and they knew that to do anything against Allah. Never. It's impossible. They knew that. So that's the rida. That's the contentment. And there's two types of rida as well. There's rida billah wa rida anillah. The first one is the rida billah, that we raditu billahi rabban, that we, we're content with Allah as our Lord, all the qualities of Allah. The, the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're content with those. That's the easy part. The other part is rida anillah, which means the decrees of Allah. Well, Allah decrees something for us that we're content with that. We don't have an apprehension, oh, am I going to win? Am I going to go into this contest? Am I going to pass my exams? Am I going to pass my P's? Am I going to get the phone that I want? Am I going to have enough money to get the phone that I want? Because that's like first world problems. So am I going to... It's not the perturb. A phone is what I want, inshallah, ya Allah. Whichever type of phone you send, I'll be happy with, inshallah. All right? So the, that angst, that internal fight, that internal questioning and querying, that restlessness, that agitation, for use of a better word, stress. Of what is it going to be? I know it's going to come from Allah, but what is it going to be? What's it going to look like? How's it, how much is it going to weigh? What's the, that's, not the, that's Allah, because Allah knows what's best for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Oh. Is that the same stress that would actually be within the nafs itself? So it will be like complete crushing of the nafs for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course it is. So the question is, is that the nafs? Of course, it's the nafs and the desires and the hawa. It's, it's what I want. But Allah knows what's better for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what's best for me. And we'll, we'll talk, I don't want to, you know, spoil the ending, but it'll come up a little bit. So he says, When God loves a people, he afflicts them. The one who is content receives his contentment, and the one who is angry receives his anger. So the, that hadith is about, again, the internal state of the being, the internal state of the human being. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he loves the people, he loves them when? When they do what he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So it's not it's not about the disbelievers. This is a it's like a, a point we have to understand. This is not about disbelievers. This is about the believers. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people, he loves the people when they do what, what makes him happy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in in reality, emulation of the prophets. When when the people emulate the prophets, Allah loves those people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them ibtila, he afflicts them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that the word that he uses?
afflicts them. When God loves the people, he afflicts them. And the one who is content receives his contentment or becomes content. So the one who's happy with the decree of Allah, content, Allah has afflicted us. There's no food, for example. There's a drought, for example. No samah Allah, la qadr Allah, God forbid. No electricity, no internet. I know it's like, I don't know, we can't even think about it. No internet, no smartphones. Oh, end of the world. That's worse than the end of the world. Let there be no food, but don't cut out the electricity or don't let the reception towers go down. That's just, what are we going to do with ourselves? We just don't know what to do now. Our phones, we're no longer smart because we've got no more phones, smartphones. So we're just, right? So whenever a, an affliction occurs, the people who are contented with that affliction, in other words, the people who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives them contentment because that's, that's what they've chosen to do. They've chosen to be content. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases them in their contentment. And the sakhat, sakhat is um, displeasure as much as, as its anger, but it's like a fury. So the one who becomes furious with, and with, a, with an affliction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they stay in that state of fury. They stay in that state of fury. It's their problem. They go, all right, no worries, off you go. There you go, just, you know, the Tasmanian devil, you know, the cartoon, he's spinning around and eating things and that's what they're like. If you want to, if you want to do that, all right, go for it, Allah SWT says. But if you want to choose contentment, I'll increase you in your contentment. I'll let you be content. And that's what it is. It's that choice of what emotional state, what emotional reaction we're going to have to a situation as presented to us or decreed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It sounds easy and it is easy. It is. Once we start practicing the red lights, the green lights, you know, go to the shop and there's, you know, I don't know if that ever happens to anyone. It's a sale or whatever and you go, there's none and you're like upset. Oh, I could have. Oh, I should have. If I'd have taken that, you know, and then that'll come later. So I don't, like I said, I don't want to spoil it. It says, your duty, O believer, is to know and believe that God the exalted is the one who causes guidance and misguidance, misery and happiness, nearness and remoteness. So all these things are under the decree of Allah. And anyone who believes and anyone who is content that Allah is their Lord will accept these things. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the creator of all things and the controller of all things. And he gives and withholds. Right? So if these things are from the beloved, being who? Being who? Who's the beloved? What? Who? In the scenario that we're speaking about when it comes to the Allah. Allah. Right? So if we truly love Allah, whether we're getting misery or happiness, whether we're getting nearness or remoteness, whether we're, Allah is withholding or giving, abasing or exalting, causing harm or causing benefit, what's the difference to the believer who loves Allah? Why don't you ask Sayyidina Ayyub? Yeah? Sayyidina Ayyub is sick. Everything he lost, firstly, he was a king. Because a lot of the Bani Israel, they were kings and they were prophets. And he had all this land and all this family and all these things. Lost all his wealth. And he had all these wives and children. They all died. Except one. And he was afflicted with a disease. And what, what did he say? He said, Alhamdulillah, I've got a tongue to make the remembrance of Allah. And a heart to know Allah. So it's the same. Because they're from Allah. Yeah? When it's from Allah... That's good because we know and we believe and we're convinced that Allah does only that which is good for us. Nothing else. Is no. I haven't heard that. I heard he just made that. I heard he couldn't even move his body. No. I heard he was just afflicted until he was completely. The question is, was he making, when he made sujood, was he, was he really, I haven't, could be, but I've never heard it. But he, my the understanding is that he couldn't really even move his body. He was like in a state of paralysis type thing. And um, he could only move his tongue and his heart. That's, that's what I understand it yeah, to be. No, not that I can recall. Not that I can recall. He would have, there's no doubt. All the prophets had their own, yeah, had their own specific supplications that were relevant to them. Sayyidina <laughs> Shu'ayy. You know, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka anni kuntum manal zalimeen. Sayyidina Yunus. So each one of them had their own 
their own, but I, I can't recall uh, his one. And some things don't come across in, in the, if it's not in the Quran, sometimes it doesn't come across in the hadith because of the hadith of Israeliya, mm -hmm. the hadith that come from the Christians and the, and the Jews that are not authenticated, but it's probably there. I'm sure if we, if we looked hard enough, we could find it. Having known and believed in this, your duty is never to object whether I think we just read on, I think. Nope. So he says, Having known and believed in this, your duty is never to object, whether outwardly or inwardly, to any of his acts. Yeah? We all accepted that, didn't we? Right? No one said, nah, that's not right. What are you on about? What are you on about, Sheikh? That's not the case. Did we or did we know? What about in our hearts? Did we reject it in our hearts? We couldn't. How can we? Because we're believers. It's impossible for any of us to reject those words. So what does, the, what does the imam say? He's got us in a corner, I can tell you that. He says, having known and believed in this, your duty is never to object. Never to object, whether outwardly or inwardly, to any of his acts. And then he gives any examples. Look, this has got us bad, real bad. He says, why did that happen? What was that? Why? Why did that happen? Why did that happen to me? I fast. I pray, I got a beard, I wear hijab, I give money, I'm a good person. Why? How many times have you heard it or thought it? It's like the, the common state of us. And we want to be like, and then we say, why does the Lord change our situation? Or the other one is, what for, man? Lima. What for is terrible. I think, sorry, no offense, but. Lima kana hada. What was the reason for that? That's the what for he's saying. Why was that what for? What was the reason for that? There had to be a reason for that. Well, look, what's the reason? What? So that's اعتراض. اعترض. Um, objection. I object. Ya Allah, I object. It's not good enough. Right? That's why it's the problem. Because we're saying it's not good enough for me. Ya Allah, you and your decrees are not good enough for me. Because I had a different expectation, whether it was higher or lower expectation. And sometimes it's lower, as in the Quran, right? Bani Israel, they're getting the man and the salwa, right? They're getting the, the birds and the best food. And they said, nah, we don't want that. We want onions, we want garlic, we want adis. What is it? Uh, lentils. And Allah's like, are you crazy? It's not like the meaning in the Quran. Are you guys nuts? Are you serious? You want the worst? You want to exchange the, like, like lobster and rock crab and mud crab? You want to exchange that for like, you know, onions and garlic and, and lentils? Are you guys normal? That's, that's, Allah's telling him that. It's not me. It's, it's in the Quran. This is Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm not making it up. So even that, even that rida is for the for worse. Like in this day and age, no one, no one would probably do that because we all want better and more luxurious and higher class and faster and more new improved. But even backwards, no, no, we don't want that. So Allah, you're not good enough for me. Allah, I don't accept what you've given because my expectation, you should do what I want if you want to look at it a different way. subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, why, why was it not like this or that, right? Is it like our life story we're hearing here or what, right? Why was it like that? Isn't that where we spend most of our, like, I just want to be frank, you know what I mean? Even though I'm hasty, I just want to be frank. Isn't that where we spend most of our time? Really? Really? Isn't that where we spend most of our time? Like, around and 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 around. And then we say, how come I'm not changing? How come I'm not getting better? How come I'm not progressing to Allah? How come my life isn't getting... And I was the same this year as I was last year. And I was the same this year as I was two years ago. And I was the same two years, uh, this year as I was... Why? It's because of that reason. Al-Atirad. I'm objecting. Objection, Your Honor. I'm a, I'm a lawyer, so I hear it all the time. Objection. Sustained, overruled, whatever. Well, I hear it every day nearly. 
Well, they object, you know. I don't accept what you're saying. I don't accept that's the court of law. When we reject, say, yeah, well, I don't accept you, nor do I accept your decree. How are we going to progress? How are we going to go forward? How are we going to change? How are we going to grow? How are we going to evolve? And then he says, or when we look at someone else, why did so-and-so deserve this? In other words, so-and-so is a good bloke, right? She's a top chick. I don't know if you can say that and that politically correct or not, but whatever, that's what we say. No, she's all right. He's, he's a good bloke. What, what did that happen to him for? What did that happen to him for? And even if it's not directly at us, still it's a person not being content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's destructive. So, and then he, he, here's the kicker, right? Whoever is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their Lord, and Islam as their deen, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as their prophet, iman. that person tastes the flavor of the sweetness of faith. And the person who doesn't do that, what are they tasting? They said nothing. And they say, what's my iman doing for me? Right? Isn't that the next step? For how many times have you heard it? How many times have you heard it? I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm doing, it's getting me nowhere. It's getting me nothing. It's, I'm not moving, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting any benefit out of it. Why? Because they haven't tasted the flavor. They haven't tasted the sweetness of iman. The Sayyidina Bilal tasted when they put the rock on his, on his chest in the middle of the hot desert and he was saying, Ahadun Ahad. Ahadun Ahad, and they put him on the coals in the night. And he said, Ahad, and then later on they asked him, they said, how'd you handle it, Sayyidina Bilal? He said, when the sweetness of Iman mixed with the pain that they were inflicting upon me, the sweetness of Iman overcame the pain. That's the answer. That's the answer. All right? So when we look up, when we look up the word and we said at the beginning, we said that it's apprehension. Right? The word apprehension. We're getting rid of apprehension. Go and look on the dictionary and find out what the antonym, the opposite word, in other words, to apprehension is. Guess what it is? Confidence. Faith. That's, that's what it's there. That, they're, the, they're the words that are there. Acceptance. Confidence and faith. And this is just in the, you know, whatever, thesaurus.com as well. Nothing even fancy, just online. Have a look. In other words, Iman Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one tastes the sweetness. Like Allah, whatever you want, I'm there. Isn't that what the deal is anyway? Isn't that what the deal is? Can anyone go against the order of Allah? You know the hadith I always say to you, Sayyidina Musa, he asked, he remembers it. Asked Allah. I know you remember, Hajj, but let everyone else have a crack. Huh? Who remembers the hadith I always say about Sayyidina Musa? And he says to Allah, Ya Allah, what if, what if the creation went against you? You remember that one? What if the creation, he said, Allah says to Sayyidina Musa, it can't happen. He said, I asked him again, because Sayyidina Musa had that, his Khalil had that relationship, like best mate relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Ya Allah, come on, Ya Allah, what would happen if all the creation went against you? He said, can't happen. He asked him again, Sayyidina Musa, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He will unleash a beast, a creation. They will swallow the whole of creation in one morsel. Sayyidina Musa, because he's pretty switched on, he's like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. All right, does it make sense? A beast. Allah's going to unleash a creation that's going to swallow all of creation. Wait a minute, a creation that's going to swallow all of creation. Does it make sense? Logical. Uh, is it too late in the, in the evening? It's Friday night and we're getting ready for the weekend. Is that what's going on? Does it make sense or not? Yeah or no? Yeah or no? No? Doesn't make sense, does it? it makes zero sense. So then Sayyidina Musa, he realized that. He said, Ya Allah, where is this creation that's going to eat all the creation? And he said, it's grazing in the pastures of my knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's grazing like a cow grazes eating grass in the pastures of the knowledge of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's impossible anyway to go against the order of Allah. It's impossible. Nobody can do it. Nobody, shaitan and all what he's doing, he's doing it on his own. He's doing it by the decree of Allah. He said, Andirni ila yawmin yubathun. He said, Ya Allah, leave me to a day when everyone gets, gets called up to be judged. He said, Anta min al go, mate. All right, it's all right, go. Let's see what you're going to do. Even that, 
Even the shaitan and his machinations can only happen by the decree of Allah. So why are we wasting not only our time, but our lives? We're wasting our lives and our time not being content with the order of Allah because we can't change it. Can anyone change it? Impossible. What about the angels? Can't. How about the hadith? If everyone got together to benefit you when Allah wanted to detriment you, sorry. If everyone wanted to get together to detriment you when Allah wanted to benefit you, can't happen. What are we, why are we going around? What, is it going around in circles or banging our heads on the wall? Which one is it? And that's the life. That's where we spend most of our time. Complaining. Oh, so and so. I don't know. People complain on, um, what do you call it? Social media, which is pretty sad. I feel sorry for people like that. You know, that it's pretty sad. Like, that's just a cry for help for anyone. And alhamdulillah, there's a cry for help and maybe someone will answer and help them. But it's pretty. But when you complain to someone, what do we, what do we spend most of our time doing? Isn't it like talking to our friends? Oh, this happened. What should I do? No, just accept it. No, 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 no. Accept it. Accept it. This, this brother came to me about five weeks, six, seven, eight weeks ago, a long time ago. And so I got fired from my job. I'm like, what? The guy works, you know, up to 12 in the, at night. And so and that's how companies, that's what they do to people. They keep them, these big corporations. They keep, they keep them scared they're going to lose their job. They're going to, so they just work them into the ground. And the guy's an f- amazing human being in his job. He's, you know, very, I've had a lot of experience with him. And then they told him one day, we're going to sack you. You're, you're going to become redundant. We're going to get rid of you. And then I said to him, you've got to move on, mate. It's, no, can't. Go to the lawyers, do this, do that. Can't accept it. Yucky, it's the, it's, the, it's the decree of Allah. Allah's going to give you something better. Allah's going to give you something better for you. Maybe you don't think it's better. Yeah? Because that's the riddle part. I don't think it's better. No, I want to be the CEO. Maybe Allah's going to make you just some sort of a manager. But I had 5,000 people under my, whatever, the, under my administration. You felt, Allah doesn't want that for you. Maybe Allah's doing that to open up a door of His mercy for you so you can worship Him. Maybe one rak'ah in the middle of the night, one unit of prayer in the middle of the night, is better than all that, that you were doing. Maybe Allah is going to use you in a way that you never thought you were going to be used. You don't know. You don't know. So accept it. Be content with it. And move on. Eight, two months have gone by. It's still the same conversation every time I speak to the poor bloke. Allah make it easy for him and, and make, bring him ease, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what our life is like. Oh, she spoke to me like that. Oh, she looked at me like that. Isn't that what we're saying? And then that, that goes for like six, seven hours, doesn't it? Oh, look, am I exaggerating or not? Please tell me if I am. You know? And I still remember that, you know, in 1982, that bloke said something to me. And, you know, I'm still upset. I'm still upset from 1980. No, you guys weren't even born half of you then. But for example, right? They took, they took, they, they didn't take, they didn't give, they didn't. Why? With all the bounties in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we can't be pleased with Allah because something didn't go according to our own desire. And in the end, in the end, that's me saying, Ya Allah, I'm challenging you in your capacity, your mulkiyah. And then we'll talk about that next week, inshallah. It's a challenge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sovereignty. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.